Hello friends, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Max. Thanks for clicking on this video. Um, that means you wanna make a Christmas stocking. <laughs> we are going to do that together um, using my Addy 46 or your Center 48. Um, you'll need one skein of Bernat Premium yarn in red and one skein in white. Um, and you'll have quite a bit left over um, after you've made the stocking. But if you haven't, I'm just gonna say right from the top, if you haven't made uh, a stocking with a shaped heel before, go to my channel and check out the one that is a sock that fits a human. <laughs> and do that one first. And just get a little bit of practice on there, even if you just make one sock. Um, and then come back and let's do this one together. It is double lined, um, so you will you know, be able to fill it with no problem and it'll hold its shape. And the thing I love about this large one is that it gives you a blank canvas to individualize it with any duplicate stitching that you wanna do. I will add duplicate stitching to this in the future um, and, and uh, have it on a video as well. But for now, I'm just presenting you with this plain um, red and white Christmas stocking that is absolutely beautiful. The measurements are at the end of the video and you can find them there. Um, but you're gonna enjoy making this one. If you've never done a shaped heel before or you're just new at it, take your time, give yourself a lot of grace and have fun. <laughs> All right, get your supplies and we'll get going. All right, my friends, if you're ready to start, then I'm ready to start, okay? So we're gonna have our machine in circular mode. We're gonna bring our last white and our first black in line with our yarn guide, and we're going to take our red yarn. This part is the inside of our stocking, okay? Let's cast on and go behind that black needle, in front of the next, behind and in front, just like that. And at any point in this round, you can change your row counter to zero. I'll stop and do that right now. So that it's ready to go when you get to the end. All right, so put it behind and in front all the way around until you get to that last white needle. It should go in front and then into your yarn guide. So we're going to just do straight knitting rows. You've got your counter set to zero. And we are going to do 40 rows for the foot. Okay, so we're just going to Keep knitting till we have 40 rows for the foot. And then we're gonna just keep going and then we're gonna do another 55 for the leg. So that's 95 rows in total. We are not going to do a formed heel on the inside part of our stocking. We'll just do that on the outside. Um, so you're gonna do 90 rows of your inside color, okay? So I'm just holding my yarn between my two fingers like that, just letting it slip through. Uh, just so if there's a knot that's coming up from the ball, I feel it before it gets here and, and snags on my needle or breaks a needle or um, gets caught in the feeder. Uh, or if you're using um, a ball of yarn that uh, you've previously used and you're at the end of it, then you can feel the end coming and it won't, you won't keep knitting and lose your, your yarn tail, okay? So I just hold it, I let it slip through very, very, um, simply without any tension at all. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna knit 40 rows for the foot and then another 55 rows for the leg. Okay, and when I'm done that, I will see you back. All right, so I have my 95 rows done. I'm going to cut off a tail, not long. Open my latch, put it in between the last white, the first black. Then I'm going to take my white yarn. We're going to now work on the cuff of our sock, okay? Into that center of the white and the black. And then I'm going to take it around to the other side of that white needle for a supposedly jogless joint. <laughs> and we are going to knit, which I will tighten when I take it off the machine, okay? We are going to knit 40 rows for our cuff. So we're going to keep going till we have... Um, 135 rows knit on our counter. So I just pulled on both tails of my white to tighten up my tension here on those first few needles. I do that after knitting three or four needles. I did three here. And uh, it keeps the tension at the beginning of the row. Um, beautiful, okay? So keep going and knit 40 rows of your white. And that is for the cuff. And your counter will say 135 when you're done, okay? All right, so how did that go? Good. <laughs> We're at 135 rows. We're gonna cut that yarn tail off. We're gonna stick it in the middle there. Now, 
if you're new to my channel and new to circular knitting, um, as your, your work starts to touch the table, you want to just keep rolling it up into a donut. That helps to put tension on the um, needle bed here that's around the rim here so that it helps to keep your stitches on your little red teeth and prevents drop stitches. So, and it also makes it easier to knit. So let's um, go ahead and cut that white yarn. We're going to grab our red yarn again. And now we're going to make the leg that is on the outside part of our stocking. Okay, so put the red in. You're gonna swing that behind that white needle. You're gonna knit three or four needles. Then you're gonna take both of those yarn ends of your working yarn. You can see that it's over top of the red divider there. I pull it just so it snugs up underneath. Tuck that underneath your little donut there. Just like that, we're gonna knit 55 rows. So 55 and 35 is 55. Is 90. <laughs> so we're going to go till we have 190 rows on our machine, okay? On our counter. So knitting with our ba with our main color, this is the leg on the right side of our stocking. And we're going to knit 55 rows. So that will take you to row 190 on your counter. Okay, see you when you get there. And then the fun will begin with the heel. All right, so it says 190 on my machine. So I'm going to now cut that red. We are going to open the latch, put it in between the last white and the first black. Take our white yarn again, put that in between the first white and the last black. Close the latch, swing that over to the other side. Okay, and now we are going to start our heel. So you're gonna to wanna to grab yourself a stitch marker, one that closes, we're gonna attach it to the row that we need to stop at. We are going to, first of all, this black needle, the first black needle counts as one. We're going to work to the 16th needle on this side and the 16th needle on this side. This counting as number one for both sides. So let's count this as one and we're going to go to 16, but we're going to stop when 15 gets in front of our yarn feeder here. Okay, so just follow exactly what I'm doing, but we're going to get this started first. So I'm going to knit three or four rows or needles, then I'm going to kind of tighten this up just a little bit. So this was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. This is the one we're going to work. Sixteen. You're going to take your stitch marker and you're going to put it in row sixteen because we want to know that's where our beginning was. Okay. All right. So before we go any further, you're going to want to make yourself a chart that is one in the middle and two to 16 in either direction. Trust me, you need to do this <laughs> because um, you will lose track if the phone rings or if the door, somebody knocks on the door, your kids call you or you just need to get up for whatever reason. You need to know what stitch you did last, okay? So we are working on 16. I'm gonna mark off 16. We are on the left side. I'm gonna mark off 16. We are going to work on that. Grab yourself another stitch marker. One that opens like this, just because it's easiest to grab. So one thing that you have to keep be aware of, and the reason why we put our the needle before, if we're working this needle, we put the needle before it in line with the yarn feeder, because then, oops, I pushed that down with my fingers. Because then that loop of the row before is not over the red teeth. It's underneath, it's on the white needle, but not over the red teeth. If we went a little bit further, that, ne that loop would drop down over the red teeth and then we wouldn't get the effect that we need. It needs to be up off those red teeth, okay? So then if this is the needle we're working, we're going to go to the one that's in front and the one that's beside that one, and we're gonna grab that yarn and we're gonna pull it out. Take it out from this needle and then put this one underneath, okay? You're gonna, essentially both of them are gonna be there. And then you're gonna pull on the back. Oops, this is caught in my yarn feeder. You're gonna pull in the back now to snug that up a little bit. Then you're gonna give this one twist clockwise. So you have a little loop in there, okay? Then you're gonna take that loop. You're gonna put it over the needle 16 that we're working. Now I pushed it down a little too far and under the nook of that needle, just like that, okay? I'm gonna show you a few times so you'll get it. And then we're going to go back the other direction, okay? So needle 15 is picking up two, needle 14 is picking up two, and that my handle's screaming at me because it's stuck on this one. 
Okay, so make sure you push them down. Make sure that both yarn ends go underneath that needle. Now we're getting to one strand. We're going to go back to our center needle. If you want to see this with less rows, go to my channel and look at the sock that we made, that I made, okay? And um, it's done on a smaller, on the Addy 22, and it's done um, over fewer rows. And you might want to start with that one first and practice on that one and then do the bigger one. But either way, it's the same stitch. So now we're going to go to our first black needle, which is this one. We're going to count one. Make that sure that goes underneath. Two. This is three. Four five, six, seven, that's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Okay, so this is the one we're working. That loop is still under that nook of that needle. It's off of the, um, it's off of the red teeth is what we want it to be. We're gonna take our little chart. We're going to cross off 16. Do that before you work it because you just got to do it right away. And trust me, because I've lost count before and it's not fun. <laughs> okay, So we're working 16. We're going to take out the yarn that's between 15 and 14. Just pull it out and across. Okay, just like that. And then give this a twist counterclockwise or clockwise, and put that loop over needle 16. Take that stitch marker out. Now we're going to go back the other direction. making sure all those loops go down and we're going to work needle 15. So we want 14 to be in front of our yarn feeder. So look at your chart. If you get lost at which one you're doing next and then you count. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 is in front. 15 is peeking up. I can go just a little bit further. There we go. And even if you're off to the side here, sometimes you have to do that to just get up on the needle there just a little bit more. But the thing they're watching for is to make sure that loop is not over the red teeth. Okay, then we're working 15. We're going to mark that off on our chart. This is 14 and 13. So we're going to take the yarn that's between those two needles, pull it out, bring it across so that now this yarn is trailing under the needle that's beside the one we're working. Then pull it in the back to make it shorter. Give it a clockwise twist just once. Put that loop over needle 15, just like that, okay? Now we're gonna go back to 15 on the other side. So it's really not that hard, but I just wanna also tell you that I'm putting some tension on the back of this yarn. I want my, my heel to be nice and snug. I don't want it to have holes. So I am putting not tight, tight tension, but about a medium tension. I'm gonna go back to my first black needle, always to my starting point that helps me to focus. Look at my chart, I need to do needle 15. So this is one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. It's seemingly going just a little off to the side to make this needle ready, and then on the other one, it goes a little off to the side, not direct center, um, to make that one ready. Okay, so now we're working row uh, needle 15. We are going to take the yarn that's between 14 and 13, pull it out and across and pull it in the back to tighten it up a bit. Give this a half a twist clockwise. Put that loop underneath needle 15. Go back to your center point. You can go right across if you want, but to teach you, I'm gonna to go to the center point because then we look at our chart and we see, oh, we did 15 on both sides. And see, I didn't mark it off on the chart because I was talking, but I have an excuse because I'm teaching. <laughs> but so I've marked 16 and 15 off on both sides. And now we're doing 14, which means we want 13 to be on the side here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. I feel like I'm on Sesame Street. So yes, yeah, so you have to go a little bit off to the side a little bit, makes it a little bit easier, okay? just right in line with the with the edge here and with the edge when you're going the other way. So now what am I going to do? 
I'm going to mark off row 14 or needle 14 because that's the one I'm working on. And I'm going to pull this out, bring it back across, pull it in the back to tighten it, give it one turn. Oops, I keep losing it. Okay, give it one turn clockwise and put that loop under the nook of that needle. Take that out. You've marked off 14. You're going to go back to your starting point. Oops, did you see what I did? I missed that needle, but I didn't get far enough. I can fix it. Yay. Yay that I didn't skip it. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to go back and I'm looking at my chart. I need to do 14 on the other side. I'm going to do one more with you and then I'm going to give you some ins further instructions. So don't leave. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Right to this corner here. Then we're going to take our little stitch marker, take our yarn from here, pull it underneath and over. Just like that. Pull it in the back to tighten it up a bit. Give it a little turn onto the needle back to starting position making sure that those needles are picking up both the yarn yarns for the first two needles okay so now if you look at your chart it will tell you that you have to do 13 so we're going to keep going in this manner till we do 13 12 11 10 9, 8, and 7 on each side. So we are working needles um, 16 to 7, including needle 7 on both sides. And when I get to needle 7, I will be back and we'll do it together. If you want to just um, rewind this and, and watch it several times until you get it, then um, you'll be set. Okay, see, now this is a prime reason why you have to mark it off. Because if I, after just explaining this to you, I'm thinking, what needle am I actually on? So I'm looking at my chart, and now I'm going to go, and I'm going to work needle 13 on this side, okay? So go ahead, do that until you get to needle 7, and I'll come back, and I'll do needle 7 with you and give you some further instructions, okay? All right, so I'm working needle 7 on this side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm going to take my yarn from between 6 and 5, put it across, mark it off on my sheet, and go back the other way, finish needle seven. On the other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is seven. I'm gonna mark it off on my sheet. And we are going to finish it. Isn't it fun? Like seriously, it's fun to challenge yourself sometimes. <laughs> and, and you get better at it the more you do it, okay? So there we go, that's seven. We're going to work back till we get to our starting point. The last white, the first black needle in front of our yarn feeder. So now we're at our starting point and now we have to do two rows, okay? Two full rows, but we wanna match our color because if we don't, we're gonna have white on red when we go around. So these two rows are gonna set us up for um, when we do our decreases to match this part of our um, heel, okay? So we're going to leave our white in there and we're going to go around until we get to needle 16. Help those down where there's still two. Yes, yeah, sometimes your handle will scream at you. You try not to let it. You gotta help those loops down because it's tight. Oops. Oh, so sorry, machine, so sorry. Help that down till you get to needle 16. Okay, you're gonna have needle 16 and needle 17 as though this is the first white and first black when, and when we start. Needle 16 is going to be off to the side there. You're going to cut your yarn, open your notch, put that on the inside. You're going to take your red. You're going to put that in. We're going to put it around to the other side of that white needle. And we will, again, tie off our joggles joints at the end when we put our, our work inside out, okay? And we're going to knit around Two or three needles pull on both ends of those working yarn to help that down okay and we're going to knit around just on this red section okay so here's where our white starts so we're going to knit this needle and then sadly we're going to cut it off again it's just the easiest thing to do and we're going to take our white and we're going to 
follow suit, knitting across the white piece, making sure that those loops are going down over the red teeth as we do so. Pull that one, needs some help, and keep going till you get to the end of the white. Okay, so we passed that black needle, that's row. We did one row, this is the second row, okay? And we're going to get to needle 16, right there. We're gonna change our yarn again. Let me see here. Uh, yes, this one's red and you can see the red loop that's on there. I'm gonna cut this, put it in between, grab my red again. And we are going to complete this second row. Okay, just like that. All right, so we cut it off and, and we put it into the center there and we can see that there's a white loop on there. So that's where our first white will come. Put it into our yarn feeder in behind that needle. And we're going to knit only till we get to our black needle. To our middle point. Oops, that one's gonna tuck too. So guys, when you're doing the heel, it takes time and it takes patience and it, it takes, um, concentration to look at every stitch okay tuck these these yarn tails underneath the donut that we have done you can remove the stitch markers that you had um that are way down there now that we had put on on stitch 16 remove that um i actually didn't put one on the left side which if you need it you could have done that too okay and we're going to now begin the decrease. So for the decrease, for this one, we went from, for the, for the increasing, we went from needle 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. We're going to do the opposite now. So you're going to take your chart and you're going to now write this out again. And we are going to work needle seven first, and we're going to go this way. So we're going to do seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, 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 10, 10, 11, 11, all the way to 16. So from here, we went 16 to 7, 16 to 7. Now we're going to do 7 to 16, 7 to 16. Okay, so if that didn't confuse you, <laughs> we got this, guys. We got this. So we're going to count our black as number one. We're going to go 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we want 7 to pop up, but just so that that loop stays under the needle not over the teeth we're going to take our yarn same thing from the same side so that's what makes it easier is what we did on the other you know going the other way so we're going to take that yarn we're going to bring it across we're going to turn it put it on underneath and I'm just going to mark this one you don't have to because you know what I didn't on the other side and nobody noticed or maybe you did <laughs> I didn't notice um, and that tells you that's needle seven I'm going to mark off seven on my chart we're going to go back helping this loop down because it gets tight but that's that's good because you don't want holes in your sock and you see this one here it is going to snag and that's what's causing it not to turn and the handle to yell at you okay or at me so I don't want that to snag I want all of the fibers of that of that yarn to get underneath that needle it wants to give you some trouble but that's okay and we're gonna go Starting needle, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we're watching as seven pops up so you can get under it. And so that that loop stays over the needle and not over the red teeth. And we're going to do needle seven. But before we do that, we're going to mark seven off on our chart. So I just marked seven off. I'm going to grab my stitch marker. And I'm going to take between six and five, bring it across. Give it one half a turn. Put that loop underneath needle seven. Take that out. If you want to mark seven, just to give you a visual as to how close you're getting to your, your row, then that, that might help you. Okay, and then we're gonna go back. We're going to do the same thing. So for now we look at our chart. The next one is eight. Okay, so we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. This is the one we're working here. Eight. What keeps happening to my stitch markers? Okay. And we're going to work that one. We're going to take the yarn out between six and seven. Bring it back in front of seven. Give it a quarter turn there or a half a turn. 
And we're going to put that underneath the nook of that needle, making sure all fibers of that yarn are there and they don't get hooked. Okay. And we're going to mark off number eight on our chart. Go back until we get to eight on the other side. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This is seven. We're working eight. So we want to go until that needle just pops up. Seven comes on this side of our um, guide and we have that loop still under the needle. And we're going to take our stitch marker and we're going to just repeat this process until we get to needle 16. And you're going to also do needle 16 on both sides, okay? So I need to concentrate on this too. So I've shown you, you can, you can um, rewind it and look again as much as you need to. Um, but we're going to go back, helping these loops down over the red teeth because it's tight. Okay, I'm going to mark off. number eight on my chart and then I'm going to do nine on this side okay so one two three four five six seven this is eight and nine is there the loop is still up over the red teeth and I just about pushed it down so I'm going to lift that up just like that and we're going to repeat this process okay so mark off on your chart now that we're doing needle nine and then you'll do nine on the other side and you're going to go back and forth like that until you get to needle 16. You're going to complete needle 16 on both sides and when I get to 16 I'll come back and see you okay. Okay so we have one more needle on each side to do so I'm going to go six to 16 so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, now it's getting double, so I have to help it. 13, 14, 15, and we are going to work 16. Pull that out, give it a turn, put it under there, and we're going to go mark it off on our chart. And go back the other direction, helping it along so our handle doesn't have to work so hard. This is the hardest part of the whole sock is when you go back, the first three stitches are tight because you got double rows there. So you have to, you have to help your loops down over the red teeth. And you see that I haven't always been successful at it, which is why my handle screams at me. Um, but I try not to have that happen as much as possible. And I will be honest when I'm not filming, it is easier. <laughs> because I'm not, when I'm not concentrating on talking to you and teaching, I, um, I'm concentrating on all the other little things that I'm missing as I'm teaching. Okay, so 16 on the other side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This is 15. And 16 just popped up. Hallelujah. We are almost done. Pull that in front. Underneath. Like I said, doing the smaller sock might be a better way to start. I'm going to mark this off on my chart. Even though it's the last row, then I know I'm... When I look back on it and think, oh, did I do 16? <laughs> then I know I did, okay? Starting the smaller sock might be something that you want to consider doing first. But, I mean, if you're already this far into it and this is your first project, then you're not going to obviously stop. <laughs> but we're going to go to the middle here because we did both sides. Now we have to do... Um, a row change again, a color change again, okay? Because we just finished our heel. Yay, folks, you did it, friends. Now we got the easy part to finish with. So we're gonna cut off our yarn tail. We're gonna open our latch, put it between the last white and the first black. We are going to choose our, take our red again, and we're going to put that into our yarn feeder behind that white needle. And we did 40 rows for the foot at the beginning of our project. We are going to add two rows just to finish off that heel. So we're going to, or pardon me, one row. We are going to do one row just to get it around. And any time in that row, you can change your row counter to zero. And then you just keep knitting. 
and knitting and knitting until you get 40 rows. So this is the easy part, my friends. Um, you just completed the hardest part of the sock, in, which is the heel. And uh, if you made it through, congratulations, you did a great job. Um, so now you can just relax a little bit, knit your 40 rows. And when I get there, I'll see you back. All right, coming up on the end of row 40. I see my little black divider coming. I that This is the last white and the first black and I take a black permanent mark and I mark that so I can always see when the end of my row is coming. We're gonna cut off a long tail. Open our latch, put that between the last white and the first black. Make sure it goes between that last white and first black because if you, if you put it over here, then you will have a hole in your um, work. So uh, I have seen where people have done that and couldn't figure out why they kept getting a hole. So always has to go between the last white, the first black, this one still has to finish working and this one has to work. Okay, turn your handle, take off needle one, needle two, three, four. It's too tight so I can't get any more. I'm going to put my finger over that next one so that it doesn't come off the, the teeth and then I can work it. And I'll go in that more. If you're scared it's going to fall off, just always go like this and hold it over those red teeth, okay? And you're gonna go around and you're going to remove every stitch from your machine, okay? Holding them on your needle with your thumb so they don't slide off. And release every needle, every stitch onto your needle and I'll see you when you get to the end. You can remove your machine and we will work on on uh, our joins, okay? We'll turn it inside out and work on our joins. All right, so we have our beautiful piece off the machine. We are going to unroll it. So the wrong side is out this time, okay? Because so we have to fix all those joins. So just unroll it so that the wrong side is facing. It's a long, long piece, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, but we got her done. And then we're gonna, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to stretch it all the way down your tube widthwise. And then you're gonna go back and you're gonna do it lengthwise. Okay, there's our beautiful heel. Unroll this and stretch it. Now I'm gonna go stretch it the other way. So just take your piece and stretch it the other way. And then we're going to work on these joins. Okay, so let's take our first join. Okay, now there's two ways to do this. On my video that I showed you um, on YouTube, uh, one way that somebody taught me was you take these both ends and you pull them away from each other just slightly until your rows line up and then you tie a knot. I have since found another way that we're gonna, and I have posted that in one of my videos. I'm not gonna mention the, the link every time I do a video, but I did post it in my um, striped beanie video. And I'm gonna do that one here again, okay? So what, what you're gonna do is you're going to take your two ends, you're gonna put your fingers over the 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 both sides so this is the red this is the white right near where your stitch is and then you're going to pull those both the same way just like that and you'll see that those rows line up they start to line up and you know what i just i don't know we will see but i just have felt that when i did my beanie doing this join it worked better so we're going to tie that off we're going to knot that we're going to go down to the next one Okay, which is at our heel. I'm gonna just fold that out just so we have it flat like that, okay? Then we're gonna take this. We're going to, you can see how the white and the red are, are not in line with each other. Okay, that's from the color change. So I'm gonna put my fingers on there and I'm gonna pull this lightly until it lines up. So I pulled it quite hard until it lines up and then I'm gonna tie it. cut it off. Fold that over. We're going to do that with this one. We're going to do it all the way down the line with all of our joints. Okay. So like that and pull. 
the other one I feel, this one I feel you can see better. You can see what you're doing better. You can see when it joins. Um, so you know what? Seriously, friends, either one is right. And I think the reason why I was, I was um, hesitating on the one that I showed you on a video is because I, I was pulling the knots a little too tight. And I think that's why they didn't line up as well. But now we're going to go across to this one here. Find the right two. Pull them. This one I'm just going to tie. I can see that coming together. So you just want to tie these the best that you can so that your joins will match up that one. Okay. I feel that this one on on the on the heel, you have to just tie a knot because you I, as soon as I tied it, I could see that, that little piece in there snugged up. So I think on the corner heels here, that's the best thing to do, okay? So what you're gonna do again over here, you're gonna just take these two and you're going to tie a knot and you're gonna watch as it snugs up. I can see that very clearly where it needs to snug up on these corners here and tie it off. I think that's the way to do these corners. This one as well. I'm gonna watch. Did I just, yeah, I like how that works there. Okay, so then I've got this one done. And I think that's it, but let me turn this over. You wanna make sure that every color change is done. Cause you know, it'd be sad if you missed one and then it started to come apart, right? That one's done, that one's done. Okay, it's done. So now what we're gonna do so we're going to turn it back the other way so that the right side is out. Okay, just like so. Let's check out our color joins here. That one looks great. Let's see here. Was that where it even was? Well, I'm telling you, friends, pulling it. See, it's all in the proof when you when you turn it around. Pulling it that way that I did first is the best way. Look at that. You cannot even see that there was a jog there. I'm um, just very slightly, but once you, no, it's not there. <laughs> so good. You choose which way you like best. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take one end and we're going to close it up. So you're going to just grab the yarn tail that's there, unfold anything that's trying to roll up on you, get it nice and smooth. Pull that tight. Then you're going to cut this off so it's not so long to work with. Grab your needle of choice. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to sew up this toe. Okay? So just around that first layer of stitches, just like that, or that first row of stitches, you're going to reinforce it. We're going to smooth this out so we can get at them all. Then we're going to go underneath. Just like that, all the way around to reinforce that toe. Okay, just like that. Pull it. This is the inside layer, okay? I think, let's see here. Yeah, that's the inside because your heel is on the other one. Okay, so now I'm going to just tie this off in a knot. Just like that. And one more for good measure. Just like that. Then you're going to put your hand in the other side of the tube all the way through to this end. You're going to put the needle into the center. Pull that thread through. Pinch the top and bring that all the way through to the other end. Okay? All the way through to the other end. You can see where this is going, can't you? Okay? All right, pull that out. Then you're gonna take this other side, sorry for my table, um, for the ugly video that section that was before this one. <laughs> my table was facing the wrong way, wrong angle, okay? And we're gonna pull on that, making sure that this one stays outside, okay? And you can cut this off to make it easier to work with as well. Thread that needle. And 
I'm going to reinforce around the outside of this one as well. Okay, so just get that, that one out of the way. You're going to go around under the top row, just like we did with the other one, and you're going to pull. Okay, so go ahead, go around that top row of this outside layer and reinforce this so it's nice and tight and closed. I'm going to stay on camera because I'm almost done. I'm only going to go around once here. You can go twice if you want. Okay, and we're going to pull up on that. Then I'm going to give it a little bit, like we, we're going to tie a knot to that one, but I'm going to also tie a knot. I'd like to make it practice to tie a knot to here as well. I just feel it holds better. Okay, just like that. Now I'm going to take this inside one and pull that piece that's on the inside right up close to the outside one here. We're going to tie a firm knot. Being careful not to break your strands because that happens. Okay, tie a firm knot, just like that. Cut these off shorter again. Then you can put them back on your needle and hide them between the two layers. Just like that, out. That, my friends, is our stocking, but we have to stretch it all out and form it a little bit better. So you're going to stick your hand in, both hands in there because it's big enough you can. You're going to stick both hands in there and you're going to smooth out that inside layer all the way up to the outside, okay? So everything is nice and smooth just like that. Then you can fold over. See? You can fold over your cuff. And we have a straight, it's straight in there. We didn't do a double layer um, toe because you know how hard that would have been, right? To get that lined up, but you just play with that just like that. And you can take a little bit of, as a matter of fact, I'm going to do it, um, a little bit of red yarn. I would advise you to do this. Let me just grab some. Just a tiny wee bit. Put it on your needle. And you're going to do it from the inside. So I'm going to turn it, um, I'm, going, I'm going to turn it the other way, but um, you're going to just make this nice and flat on the inside so that, so that right here, the tube that's on the inside is, is right against the, the wall of the front of your sock there. Then you're going to smooth out your heel, get it where it needs to be over top of your tube. And we know it's smooth on the inside. Then what we want to do is we just want to tack this to the inside tube, just I'm going to just turn it this way so I can get at it better. Just so this inside tube stays in place. Like I can feel it right there is where, where the edge of it is. We have to go straight down through that one layer, underneath one stitch, and out the other side, just like that. Okay, we're matching it with red. And then just leave a tail there on both sides. You're going to make a knot. You're going to take these, put them back onto your needle. I don't like the knot on the outside, but you're not going to see it once we do this. You're going to go back into, into the one space where it came out and then get it up in between those two layers and pull it. You do not even see that, okay? It looks like part of the stitch. And you're going to do that down here as well. And that is going to hold this piece in place, okay? So that you do not might only need it on the one side there on the on the top here and then on the top here as well okay and then when you smooth out your your heel like that it will stay I would put I'm going to put a tack on both sides here and there on both sides of my sock just like um like what I just showed you okay and then hide it that way this will stay in place and your heel will look nice and look at this this is a beautiful, beautiful sock. And you know what you can do? You can take this and you can do duplicate stitching on here. Um, or, or make a snowman applique and put it on there. Or whatever you like. Do their names um, on there. But this is absolutely perfect. I'm just loving it. So this uh, this picture doesn't... My camera can't get it all in there quite quite as good as I would like to. But um, you will see it in the next in the picture right after. And you saw it at the beginning. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead now. One last thing. We need to make a little tie for here, okay? So you can crochet that if you like. You can um, do a little flat panel on your your Addy and uh, 
you know, just make a little loop however you like. You can just add a little elastic there, whatever you want to do. But I am going to use my Addy egg and I'm going to make, um, I'm going to make a little tube, a six, six row tube. Um, I'm going to make two of them and then I'm going to um, mattress stitch them together. So I'm going to make them and then I'll be back with you to show you what I do with them. Um, but I have a video on how to use the Addy egg, so I'm not going to add that to this video. You can you can check that out and then follow suit and then um, come back and I will, in the, just this very next clip, you'll see how long they are and what I'm going to do next, okay? All right, so I decided I'm only making one. Um, that's all we need, okay? So I'm going to measure it and it is six and a half inches long using my Addy egg, okay? Again, you can find um, instructions on how to use that on my channel. You want to line up your heel up at the top here. So find your center, which is right here, okay? And we're going to take our piece. We're gonna just fold it in half like that, okay? And I'm just gonna sew these two together. Nothing fancy about this, okay? Just gonna sew those two end pieces together. Okay, and then I have my piece that looks like that. And I'm gonna sew that onto the inside and through all the, well, only through the red layers so that it's not coming through the white. I'm gonna just through, sew it through the red layers. Um, through here okay and sew it on nice and tight you can just fold this up like that take this end put it in there come through like that and then sew it on okay so then when you fold over your brim you have you have your handle so you can go ahead and do that and I'll see you back when you're done okay so that's sewn on nicely okay just like that so I'm going to take, I tied these two ends off in a knot, and I'm going to take that knot, or take those ends and put them on my yarn needle, and I'm going to hide them in between the two layers. Pull them out, cut it off. And our stocking has a little handle. <laughs> what a fun project. You challenged yourself, you got it done, there's a foot. Let me just get some measuring. My measuring tape and measure this out so from the back of the heel to the tip of the toe is 13 and a half inches <laughs> from the tip of the toe all the way up to the top of the cuff is 20 inches and it, it is seven and a half across that is a beautiful size stocking okay friends you're gonna love this give yourself um, some time to work on that heel and don't be hard on yourself. <laughs> enjoy the process. Learn it as you go and just enjoy. So thanks for, again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you make yourself a couple stockings in whatever colors you like and, and that you challenge yourself and do some duplicate stitching on it. I, I probably will do that too and I might do it in a tutorial. We'll see. Um, okay. But anyways, take care friends. It was wonderful spending time with you. So please um, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and share my patterns wherever you can just to get, um, get them out there. I would appreciate your help in that. And uh, also, I have a Facebook group called Koala Knits and Knacks. The link will be in the description below. We'd love to have you come over and join our group. Um, we have lots of great crafters there and lots of inspiration to be had. So have a great day, my friends, and we'll see you in the next video.